Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we are going to make soft pretzel sticks and this is what they look like. As you can see, the outside is this beautiful golden brown and it's nice and chewy, yet inside the pretzels are wonderfully soft. Now I have sprinkled the outside crust with some sesame seeds, although you could use pretzel salt or even uh, poppy seeds. And the best part, I think, is that we're gonna fill the center of the pretzel with grated cheese. So, to make our pretzel dough, if you have a stand mixer like I have here, you will need both. We're gonna start with the paddle attachment, but you'll also need your dough hooks. We're gonna need it. And you could, like all breads, you can make it by hand just in a large bowl. So the first thing you will need is flour. I'm using a combination of all-purpose flour, plain flour, and bread flour. The all-purpose flour makes the pretzel soft, and the texture soft, and the bread flour gives you a bit of chewiness. So you will need one and three quarter cups, 225 grams of all-purpose flour, and one cup, 130 grams of bread flour. And then, you will need yeast. I am actually using uh, two teaspoons, six grams of SAF red instant yeast. You know, the instant yeast is used a lot by professionals. It's really good with uh, when you have breads like this that have a long fermentation period. And plus, we don't have to activate the yeast before we can just dump it right in. So two teaspoons, six grams of that. But you can use the active dry yeast. You will, again, need two teaspoons, six grams. But unlike this where I just dumped it in there, you will have to activate it in the uh, water that we're using. And that your water will have to be just, just warm. And then I am using two and a half teaspoons, eight grams of dry malt diastatic powder. Now that... Uh, it's really good for, it aids in browning, and it also breaks down the starch, which gives sugar for the yeast to feed on, which is really good when you have, again, a long fermentation period. You know, some people, you don't want to buy it, because you usually have to buy a large one. So you could just leave this out and just put in one tablespoon, 15 grams of granulated white sugar. And then you will need one and a half teaspoons, six grams of salt. I'm using kosher salt there. Now I'm just gonna put on my paddle attachment and just mix that. So if you're doing it in a bowl, just stir it with a wooden spoon or your hand. Simple enough. I'm gonna just switch over to my dough hook. Now I am going to add two tablespoons, 25 grams of a really, this is really soft butter. I'm using unsalted. You could use the salted. It's going to add some richness to our pretzel dough. And then the last, of course, we need some water. If you are using the uh, instant yeast like I have, you will need icy cold water. I got water from the fridge. I prefer a filtered water when you're making a bread dough. So you will need 7 eighths of a cup, which is 210 grams of cold water. The reason I'm using cold is we gotta, we're going to need this dough for, I think it's nine minutes, and that's going to warm it up. So if you start with cold, we're going to end up with a dough, which I want a dough at room temperature, which means 73 to 76 degrees Fahrenheit, 23, 25 C. So that's why I'm starting with the uh, cold water. So now I am going to put my mixer on first speed and I am going to knead the dough for five minutes. Then I'm going to increase the speed to the second speed and beat or need, I should say, need an additional four minutes. So it's five at first speed and then four at second speed. And then at the end, you will have a really smooth and elastic dough, which I will show you at the end. So we will start. Okay. We are done.
Now I'm going to show you a way to make extra sure that your dough has been kneaded enough. As you can see, it's, oh, look at that beautifully smooth, elastic, not really sticky, just slightly. So what you can do is just twist off a little bit. If you find your hands are sticky, you can just put a little water, mine are fine. And what you want to do is just gently pull on the dough and we don't want it to rip. This is a good way to, to know that you've kneaded your dough enough. If you found when you're pulling it, gently pulling it out, it rips, then put it back into your mixer or hand knead it a, a minute or two longer until when you stretch it, it's like this, no tearing. So our dough is done. So what I'm going to do is just wrap it in some plastic or you could just cover it with a clean towel. And because we worked the dough quite a bit, we're going to let it rest just right on the counter like that for 10 minutes. And then when we come back, we will divide it into our individual pretzels. So it's been about 10 minutes. So unwrap. We're now going to divide our dough into eight equal pieces. But first, have a uh, baking sheet. I've lined mine with parchment, or you could just lightly oil it. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of flour down. So when we put our dough on there, it won't stick. So now I'll just put a little flour so it won't stick. <laughs> and if you have a scale, which I recommend, actually I recommend you have a scale to weigh all your ingredients. We are going to divide this, like I said, eight equal pieces, which is about 75 grams per pretzel. And when you are cutting your dough, don't rip it. I'm using like a bench scraper. You can just use a knife and cut straight down. I will get the 75. Okay. And then I'll show you what I'm going to do. Take your dough and we're just going to, we're going to do what is called like a pre-shape. So I'm going to flatten it. I'm not uh, flouring my counter here. I'm just doing it right on there, just into a round kind of, and then just take, go around and fold it into the center like so, like that. And then let's take it, flip it upside down, and then in the palm of your hand, just go around in the circle. And it's creating some surface tension. And then you have a nice round, and then just put it right on there. And just carry on with the rest of the dough. OK, that's my last one. So now I'm going to. Because again, we work the dough, I'm going to let it rest for another 10 minutes. And then we will do our final pretzel shake. So it's been about 10 minutes. So now we are going to form our dough into the sticks or logs. So I've done most of them. But what you do is you take your round and so the top, flip it over so now the top is on the bottom. I don't flour uh, my counter. Uh, you can flour your hands a little if you have to. And what you're going to do is just pat it into like a rectangle, like so. And then what you're going to do is take the top and go down about a third like that and then take and just press in to seal it. And then just take the top again down another third and press to seal and then again and seal. And once you have that, we want to make sure that the dough is sealed. So we just put it like that. Take, you can use one, two hands. Again, just kind of roll it into a log shape back and forth. And you can see, I don't know whether you can see that, it's sealed. And that's what you're looking for. And then put the seal side down on your baking sheet, like that. 
So normally, uh, with the once you form your pretzels, you could just if you didn't want to make them all logs, you can make them into the you know the regular pretzel sh shape. I do have a uh, recipe and a video on the joybaking.com website or the YouTube channel on how to make pretzels uh, in that shape, but you can use this dough to do that. And sometimes, like if you wanted to make double this amount, you could double the recipe and make like eight logs, eight pretzels, you know, you could do that as well. But anyways, normally with the pretzel dough, you would now like, let it proof at cover it, let it proof at room temperature for about an hour. And, but we're going to do this a little differently. We are going to cover it and we are going to let it, the um, pretzel logs proof for, but only half an hour at room temperature. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off this plastic wrap and I'm going to just take this whole baking sheet and put it into the refrigerator and I'm going to chill these overnight. And that way we'll get a slow rise. And the, the added benefit of doing that, the long fermentation period, is it, your uh, pretzels will be more flavorful. The longer they, they prove slowly, the, the more flavor your dough will have. And the other th reason we are leaving it uncovered is so that our logs get a, like a bit of a crust on the top. And one, that's gonna aid when we, because you, if you don't know, you gotta, pretzels are a little different. We gotta boil them and then we're gonna bake them. And so when they get that crust, the, the shape will stay, your pretzels won't kind of fall apart. And two, it's going to help with that nice chewiness of the outside crust of which we all love with the pretzel. So anyways, what we're gonna do, cover it. I'll run over that again. Uh, cover it, let it proof at room temperature. By room temperature, I mean 73 to 76 Fahrenheit, 23 to 25 C. Half an hour like this, then take off the plastic wrap and put it into the refrigerator overnight, uncovered. And when we come back, we're gonna boil our uh, pretzel logs. So we're back. I did let my pretzel sticks chill overnight in the uh, refrigerator. So now for the next step. Pretzel dough is a little different than most bread doughs in that we have to boil our pretzels and then we're going to bake them. So what you will need to do about a half hour to an hour before we start boiling our pretzel sticks, you want to take your uh, baking sheet out of the refrigerator and let it sit at room temperature. We want those just to warm up. And then while that's happening, you want a large saucepan pot and put in eight cups, which is two liters of water, along with a third of a cup, 90 grams of baking soda, also known as bicarbonate of soda. And then bring that up to a boil. And then we are going to boil our uh, pretzel sticks on both sides. I'm going to do it 30 seconds each side. That's about what I like. Uh, you know, you can try that and then see the longer you boil your uh, pretzels, the more fluffier they will be. So try it at that and then see, and then you can adjust the next time whether you want it more or less. But I find 30 seconds is about right. So I'm going to put in uh, about three at once and have a timer. Just put right in there. One two has a nice hard crust on the outside and I'm going to set my timer and then I like to turn them over with uh, tongs you could use a spoon and then I like to we're going to have to take them out of the water I like to have you can have a slotted spoon or I think this is called a wire skimmer but nice tool to have okay okay that's about right so now I'm just going to Turn them over. And I'm going to set my timer for another 30 seconds. Okay, so it's another 30 seconds, so I'm going to use my and pick it up, and I just kind of try to get all the water off. And I'm just going to put it on my 
Baking sheet lined with parchment. I like that seam side to be facing down. Don't worry about it too much at this point. We can, we can fix that later. Turn them over. So that's all you do for this point. And then I'm just going to, whoop, get that nice. So I'm going to do three more. Okay, so that's our last one. Okay. Now, just as a little side note, this is a little different, the baking soda and the water. If commercial bakeries or even some home uh, bakers like to use food lye, a combination of water and food lye, lye you can do that. Um, personally, I a little hesitant because food lye, you have to be very careful with it. You have to wear goggles, you have to wear rubber gloves. You really don't want to get it on the skin. Now I know it'll produce a um, bagel or bagel, well bagel, pretzel with a more crisp, chewy crust, but I don't know. I just don't want to work with food lye. So that's why I use the baking soda. So now uh, at this point, I'm going to clean up here, but meanwhile, preheat your oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 230 degrees Celsius, and I'll be right back and we'll finish these off. So now what we are going to do is make an egg wash and we're going to brush our pretzel sticks and that's going to give them a nice shine. So you will need one large egg yolk, which is about, you know, 17 um, grams, along with one tablespoon of cream. And I'm just using a wire whisk. You can just use a fork, mix that together. And then just take a pastry brush and we're going to brush the tops and the sides with the egg wash. Okay, the last one. And then, now you can just leave them plain, or what I like to do is sprinkle them with sesame seeds. You can use the white or the black or a combination. You could also use uh, pretzel salt or you can even use poppy seeds. Or like I said, you can just leave them plain. I like a nice coating. <laughs> okay. Some I like to put both on like that. Okay. And our next step. Now you could just uh, take a razor blade or a knife and just make a few scores on them. But what we're going to do is fill them with cheese. I just love that combination. So like I said, you, if you have one of these razor blades, you could just use a knife, I mean, either one. And what I'm gonna do is score or cut straight down the center of our pretzel, like so. And then just, I like to go down, I don't know, maybe a third, and then just kind of open it up like so. And then we're going to put some cheese, grated cheese. I'm using Asiago. I love that. It's, it's got a pretty strong flavor. It's aged and kind of nutty. Other times I use like a Parmesan or you could use a Swiss cheese. But this is a really nice one. And then just, if you like a lot of cheese, put a lot of cheese. If you don't, just a little, like so. And then you can just leave it like that. But sometimes what I like to do is take a little sweet paprika and just, it adds a nice color. Like so. These are so good. <laughs> so I'm just going to uh, carry on and do the rest. So stuff. I don't know whether I said you will need about two ounces, which is 60 grams of grated cheese. 
about that. You know, if you want extra, then you need a little more. But. So now, ready to bake. Everyone's oven is a little different. These actually don't, we're using a fairly uh, hot oven, so these won't take too long. In my oven, about 14 minutes. So I'm gonna say 14, 15 minutes. Really nicely golden brown. If you tap them on the bottom, it will sound hollow. I do like to rotate my baking sheet front to back about halfway through baking. So I'm gonna say 14, 15 minutes. So our pretzel sticks are ready. Don't they look gorgeous? So put your baking sheet on a wire rack and oh, beautiful golden brown color. And then you can see oh, no, the paprika kind of colors the uh, cheese. I think it just adds, just adds, I don't know, color. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is let these cool down a little and then when we come back, I will try one. It smells really great in here. That bread with the cheese, wonderful. You know, I really like the look of these. You can probably tell. Um, I like making regular, the regular shaped pretzels, but for something really different, unique, try the, making these. And I like the um, sesame seeds on the side, kind of adds texture in the look. So I'm gonna see if I can break this apart. Oh. Look at that. You got that nice outside crust and then you can see it's really nice and soft inside. Let's take a bite. is chewy, crisp on the outside, soft, fluffy, soft on the inside. Tastes like a pretzel, but you have that cheese, which just adds to me, it's just perfect. So, um, it's great for a snack. Wouldn't the kids love this when they come home from school? You could serve it like a snack. You could serve it for lunch with a salad and what Rick really likes is when I take one and I cut it in half horizontally and then fill it, and like make a sandwich out of it. Put like, since you have the cheese on top, I j just like to put uh, like lettuce, tomato, maybe a little sandwich meat. It really makes a great sandwich. And of course, like most breads, they are the best the day they're made. But I find the next day still really good. So you must try these. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com.